start the plenary session, I would like to invite the first speaker of the day, Professor Chandrika Vijayaratna. Welcome, ma'am. Diabetes Care in Sri Lanka, Neerogi meaning good health. 
and of course the responsible agent remain the SLMA but in concurrence with the Ministry of Health. And our main priority was to target the impoverished, overcrowded urban settings because these are the settings which have the greatest burden of non-communicable diseases and the fact that they often get overlooked in terms of the fact that there is a lot of out-of-pocket expenditure as shown by Dr. Vanagali and others on about non-communicable disease, even though we have a free set uh, health service. And also the fact that in overall diabetes and cardiovascular care, it's not just doctor dependent, it really should be patient-centered and emphasizing self-care through education and close to home in the primary care, not in the big hospital. So therefore, our main theme and priority was to improve this primary care curative setting as well as to encourage screening and primary prevention before the disease occurs. So this, the goal was to really develop a nationally relevant model and so that it can be applied throughout the island. So we ran three programs in parallel at the same time and I'm talking about the first program which is now over from 2009 to 2012. The first component was really to train nurses as educators in diabetes and cardiovascular risk reduction and that was through the Ministry of Health, the Department of ETNR, which is Education, Training and Research and through the nurses' school. So we developed modules and we picked, selected, hand-picked the nurses, including those from the forces, and we trained them to become very effective communicators in diabetes prevention and control. And they were located throughout the country. I'm happy to say that the outcomes were, well, successful but not entirely when we did reviews by independent uh, 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 evaluators simply because doctors couldn't perceive nurses as being in their teams, I'm sorry to say. So I would really like this, these barriers to be over, overcome and also the fact that patients need to take on self-care and become more compliant entirely through motivation and encouragement. Similarly, of course, we do not have uh, data on long-term complications because we are still three years into the project, but in terms of short-term complications such as say admission due to hypoglycemia were reduced entirely due to the fact that there was better education. So we also developed protocols and we gave training to doctors and nurses in pairs in the primary care. And we picked up on several uh, uh, basic uh, components which are called central dispensaries at the primary care level in busy Colombo and we set up these diabetes specialist clinics and we had people like DMOs, uh, public health inspectors functioning very effectively in teams not only in patient care but also empowering the community. So this actually helped to improve the uh, new kind of model. You, we had the huge diabetic clinic at the National Hospital with 12,000 patients who would probably come and spend about one minute with the doctor just to get their drugs uh, re rewritten. Whereas here we strengthened the laboratory services, we developed simple guidelines and there was a partnership between the high level tertiary care as well as the basic primary care. And when we looked at our uh, monthly clinic returns, we found that based on protocol and proper uh, review, we found that less than 1% of the patients needed referral from primary care back to tertiary care. So this was very revealing. And we have shared this knowledge with the Ministry of Health. So there were the doctor nurse pairs and the role of the nurse was uh, identified and the long-term monitoring and the availability of drugs, the generic drugs was also emphasized to this program. So in terms of clinics, they also uh, adopted a new aspect of screening. So if you come across a patient who might have these factors, they offered them to uh, screening service on appointed days, usually a weekend, to screen them for diabetes and cardiovascular disease. And the pickup rate from these opportunistic screening methods was as much as 16%. 
So there was a lot of uh, support, not only from the political, uh, we, we had uh, political will, the corporate sector, all got together. And we had these sustained Nirogi clinics in three uh, peripheral units as well as three central dispensaries. We also had another aspect, which was to empower the community, and this was essentially through health promotion with the faculty of uh, uh, Rajanaka, which has a health promotion unit, and this was a very, very, um, uh, very uh, rewarding experience. So we identified two MOH areas, the Porte and the Colonava, and targeted three settings, the schools, the workplaces, and the communities. And what? The expansion drive was such that though we had identified, say, 15 places, it grew up to as much as 150 because the population wanted more and more centers for them to take on the leadership in promoting good health in their community. And the interventions were really led and owned by the participants, not by external experts such as doctors and nurses. And actually they generated the process of change. The time felt available to me is difficult to uh, explain to you in detail, but you can always visit our office and our website and learn uh, more about these experiences. And actually the people themselves identified the underlying determinants as to why they were unhealthy, and they also developed a continuous monitoring mechanism. So, for example, when we uh, looked at the, these same cohorts of people, as to say, for example, their consumption of healthy food at the beginning and at the end. There was a huge difference. They started eating more fruit, they ate less bread, they ate less deep fried food and sweetened drinks, etc., which were more towards health. And this was indeed very, very gratifying. And also particularly the salt reduction, when all our food is tasty because it's too salt, which is unhealthy. And also the fact that they increase their physical activity in terms of walking, exercise, and reducing the time spent on watching television. So, in terms of alcohol and tobacco, I'm afraid we didn't achieve that much of positive change. Maybe our interventions are not directed well into that, but also there was more female participation than male participation. But these are things that we have to make use of to take on further uh, uh, avenues of uh, a healthier society. Well, the perceived mental and social well-being was that there was greater happiness overall, anger control was better, time management was better, and in fact they showed that money saved was more by adopting a healthy lifestyle. And their knowledge of diabetes and perceived skills in motivating others to continue to take the treatment rather than following some for the advertisements, etc., was also very successful. And the fact that they felt that they were capable enough in helping their communities to be uh, adopting more healthier uh, lifestyles. So the lessons we learned from this was that 